I'm Andrea Hewlin. I'm an artist in Cairns, far north Queensland. I'm a painter. I work across a few genres like uh, still life, portraits and uh, figurative work that incorporates some urban landscapes as well, which is what I'm showing here. Yeah, I came to my art practice quite late. So I was a journalist and announcer with ABC Radio in my early career and then moved on to work for uh, the Cairns Regional Gallery and some other arts institutions in Cairns in marketing and communication roles. And that led me to kind of want to revisit the art that I did at school and dabbled with over the years and, and sort of see what I might still be able to do or not do. And uh, then it kind of snowballed from there. So really I've only been focusing on my painting for the last 10 years. So this exhibition kind of came about uh, from some earlier work I did where I kind of looked at the still life painting that I usually do and the things that attracted me to still life painting which is the colour and the form, the lustre, a little bit of sparkle in some of the objects that I paint in uh, some of my still life work in oil paint and it led me to think what if I took the same approach with figures and it um, the boxiness of the figures in their PPE, you know, their, their high-vis uniforms um, and the uniformity of those uh, with that little bit of reflective sparkle and that little bit of light bouncing off the helmets and that sort of thing has me thinking about them almost as objects rather than people. So in a way that's kind of how it led to them. Um, then I changed it a little bit and added, uh, changed the medium as well so it became water-based medium, gouache and acrylic paint instead of oil which really was just to shift it a little bit again but also to have a bit of a break from the um, smelly oil paints so yeah just to kind of sometimes it's nice to just kind of stretch out and and do something a bit different yeah. So my method for um, making these works is is based off photographs. So um, sometimes I just stalk people from a distance and uh, take the photos that way uh, with my smartphone. Um, but most recently I've decided that, that I would actually take a deep breath and approach the, uh, the workers and approach the, the, the work sites and the owners of the companies and ask if I could have permission to, to visit. And so that's what I did this time. I went to the source and uh, took lots of photographs. So I do work from the photographs, but I manipulate those first. So I do some digital collaging. So I take figures from one image and place them in another place, or I add elements and that sort of thing to, to various photographs just to um, complete the composition or to add something in that I want to be there. So I work from those digital collages. I, I asked someone once, uh, they were digging a hole or doing something and I said oh look I'm an artist and I just want to get some photos um, of you guys at work and they're all like oh I don't know I don't know uh, so they go and get their boss and the boss comes and says I couldn't say yes or no and I thought okay I don't know what to do with that and that's when I realized I had to actually get permission from sort of higher higher up so I actually approached Ken's regional council and they um, they granted me a kind of artist in residency at their depot so I was able to go and I had a little chaperone and I was able to, to take photos and move around quite freely in my own PPE uh, at the various sites so that was actually really good because I hit the mother load, I hit the high vis mother load so um, yeah and that way I had, I had their blessing and look the workmen I don't, they don't mind I think um, because really they're not recognisable um, I'd say probably some of them would be able to recognise themselves, but generally I think the public, you know, you, could, you wouldn't be able to tell who's who necessarily, and in a way that's kind of the idea, that, there's, that people are kind of invisible, yet high vis. So um, sometimes some of the workers are delighted to be the a subject of a painting and they say you should paint me you should paint me you know and they pose a bit and others are really shy and they don't want to be um, to be included uh, so yeah it's kind of interesting and but the people whose sites are in the paintings are actually really excited about having their their business or their environment in paints 
No, I don't think anyone who's ever been in them because I took those photos sneakily so and from quite a distance so I don't think anyone really would have known that they're in them. This one's a bit different so this one I think the the artists are um, or the, the companies know they're in these paintings so they said they were going to send some photos to the guys so I'd be really curious to know what they think especially this guy you know one of this yes. Rio guy because he's um, he's quite handsome uh, yeah and he's uh, it's quite I think it's quite a majestic sort of a picture of him himself there so with my process I do uh, sort of work on pa one painting at a time um, especially with the coloured ones although I have my work I have all the reference material ready to go and the paper ready to go and once I've got that all ready I tend to work on them fairly quickly one after the other after the other and then I've, I, keep, I keep the momentum going and I quite enjoy that feeling of sort of knocking one over and moving on to the next one straight away uh, rather than having to fiddle around with the reference material and that sort of thing. With the big black and white ones I have two uh, big canvases stapled to the wall and I tend to work on those at the same time so while one's drying I work on the other one so that was quite fun. Hmm. In my studio I couldn't live without uh, my iPad probably, it's not very you know, old school but there you go, uh, I use it for my reference material, it's, I get good darks and good lights by working from a screen rather than working from a printout so I use it for uh, a paint from it, um, I also use it as a kind of visual diary so I'll use it to, to do some mock-ups, I uh, sometimes play music on it. Yeah, it's quite a workhorse. I find it very useful in the studio. It's covered in paint. But I'd have to say probably the main thing I can't do without is air conditioning because I'm a princess and it's cans. It gets very, very hot. So, <laughs> The best piece of advice I've been given as an artist is probably from my sister, who's also an artist in Western Australia. And we often talk about fear and, um, uh, you know, the internal critic, the inner critic and so on. And she says, she says to start a painting, uh, every painting as if it's just a practice, as if it's just a study. And then you're not invested in the outcome and you're not so scared about it being perfect or Im imperfect. If it works out, great. And if not, that's okay. You don't go into a decline over it. You just move on to the next thing and say, oh, that was good exercise. Mm. Okay. Yes, definitely the biggest challenge of showing your artwork in public is self-doubt and, and um, exposing yourself to ridicule and the idea that no one would ever tell you you know you've just got to everyone tells you nice things of course but you you don't know what they're really thinking so that's okay uh, look it's much harder in, in the very early stages when it's your first body of work um, and that was actually properly terrifying but um, now that I've had some successes I'm much more comfortable with showing a body of work and I know that uh, you know, some work is better than others, some bodies of work are better than others, but I'm much more able to kind of be, be cool with that. Um, yeah, it's once you get over that initial hurdle of your first couple of exhibitions, I think uh, things get a bit easier. Perth Tucker Regional Gallery organised a brochure for me, a catalogue for this show, which is the first time I've ever had a book as such. So I'm really excited about that. And there was an, an essay written by a fellow artist in, in that, which is the closest thing, I suppose, to a uh, art critique. And uh, I found that quite, yeah, quite thrilling, actually, to sort of see some, what someone else has taken out of your work and how they've made sense of it and written about it. And so I found that really great. I guess I'd like to be able to thank the people who are in the paintings and uh, the ones who are aware and those who weren't aware, <laughs> but also um, to Cairns Regional Council, LDR Constructions and GDA Constructions for um, letting me come and visit and uh, hang around like a bit of a weirdo with the camera. So um, thanks for buying into it. I think they probably thought what's going on here secretly, but they humoured me. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty great that the arts and um, construction could kind of meet like that.